Hey everybody, before the show starts, log on to musicmoneymakeover.com slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, make sure you click on the book a call tab to book a call with me to get all your questions answered and your problem solved. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover show. My name is Casey Graham. And on this episode, we got to keep it real. Look, I got to drop the reporter comment, the, the reporter tone inflections in my voice. Because we got to get down to the nitty gritty. Auntie Anita Baker, right? My wife in another life, Anita Baker, has said some things that has exposed the entire record industry. And she's not the first, but one of her stature to say the comments and say the things she said. She really has exposed this industry. And we're going to get into it on this episode. But before, but before we do that, as we always do in every episode from now on, we got to explain copyright until you all get it. I'm going to drill it in your head. So here we go. Copyright. The sole right which an author has in their own original literary compositions. The exclusive right of an author to print, publish, and bend their own literary works for their own benefit. Now, of course, the music industry operates and revolves around two copyrights, and that's the sound recording copyright and the performing arts copyright. All right, now sound recordings as in records or the audio recording file, the WAV, the MP3, the AIFF of the composition in our song is referred to as the masters. And those funds can be collected from your distributor. And for all you independent artists that's TuneCore, DistroKid, yada, 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 on down the list. Now, in America, Sound Exchange collects for the performance royalty for the sound recording on webcast radio and also on internet radio, all right, and satellite radio. We don't collect for the performance of the sound recording on any other option, or any other platform, but PPL does that over in the UK and overseas, they do that. This is sometimes referred to as neighboring rights, but sound exchange can collect those international royalties for you, and PPL can do that if you're in any other country, all right? And you can collect royalties from PPL if you're in America, all right? Now, the other side, the publishing, the performing arts, as in the composition, sheet music, MIDI files, publishing, or song to be performed is referred to as publishing. You can collect the performance royalty of your publishing or your composition at BMI ASCAP CSAC in America. And then overseas, you can collect it at PRS in the UK. All right. Now, you can, let, you can collect your lyric display royalties from Lyric Find and Music Match. And you can also collect your mechanical royalties here in America from HFA, which is the Harry Fox Agency, the OGs on the block, Music Reports, and the Mechanical Licensing Collective. All right, and then MCPS is your European Mechanical Collection uh, Performance Society. All right, now there are six rights of copyright to be exercised to the fullest extent of the U.S. Constitution under Title 17, and that's the right to reproduce, the right to prepare derivative works, the right to distribute, the right to public performance, the right to public display, and the right to digital performance. Now, for those of you all who are watching this video, if someone is in Anita Baker's camp, I would love for you all to send this video to her. Like, I'm I'm not going to say I'm one of her biggest fans, but I just absolutely love her voice. All right? All right? So I, if you could send this to her. Anyway, that's my side note. But let's get into it. Did not not explain how to own your own masters using Anita Baker as an example on, let's see, what's the date? Back on October 31st, 2020. Did not not do this on the channel to simplify it? For all the newcomers into the music business. All right. Now, this has nothing to do with Anita. And as I explained in the video. But I use this to. It's funny how I, I brought this up. And then now there's an issue with Anita in the music industry. And I love how she so eloquently put it. As the queen mother should have. All right. But I got to get into her tweets. So let's jump in. So at the top of her Twitter page. It says, Farewell Concert Series of 2018-2019. All right. I wish I got would have had tickets to that, but I didn't. But anyway, she has retired from the plantation 2020. That's right. I need to return my master's 2021, please. So you can see through here. She's like, I'm asking you nicely to return my master's. But since you won't return them, I guess I got to get gangster on you. And for those that are going to understand what she's saying next, then you totally, you totally get where she's coming from on each one of these tweets. Let's go. So, miraculously, I have outlived all my artist contracts. They no longer own my name and likeness. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. They no longer own my name and likeness. Did not not. Hold on, I'm going to save that did not not for a minute. 
and by law, 30-year-old masters are to be returned to me. Unfortunately, they're going to make me fight for it. I'm prepared to do that. So please don't advertise or buy them. Anita Baker, hug and kiss or XO. Okay, wait a minute. Didn't I not just say, didn't I not? On November 25th, 2020, after Dave Chappelle, I think it was like a day after Dave Chappelle had his, hit that video drop about him and his not owning the show. Didn't I not explain to you about how name and likeness work? Didn't I not do this? Okay, this is one of my first viral posts. And I laid it out. And here now you have Anita Baker following suit. It's the same thing across the entire industry. Isn't it not? So let's continue. Hello, sweetheart. Thank you for sending me your gifts, your love. But let's not advertise Spotify streaming, which is a publicly traded company with a $50 billion valuation, but doesn't pay artist creators what they're worth. Anita Baker, hug and kiss. <sighs> Y'all, look, man, I've been explaining this on my channel. I've been doing this, this whole music money makeover on this on YouTube for a little over a year, but on, on the internet period for about two years. There's so many artists who've come out about Spotify and explaining how much they're worth and how much they're not paying artists. Spotify has been in the game for almost 11 years now. All right. And we all championed it when it came in. It was like, oh, this is going to be a solution. At first it looked okay, but then maybe a year or two in, we were like, wait a minute. But now they're at a $50 billion valuation. She had originally had 50 million, but it's actually 50 billion, Miss Baker. Okay. So, you know, now we have an issue and I'm going to get into some more did not not sections in this video because I want you to click through my this video right here. Go click on all the other videos that I mentioned in this video if you want to be on top of your game as a new artist coming in the industry. Right? I want you to I want you to learn on this channel. That's what it's about. I'm not here trying to tear down record labels, managers, publishers. We all need each other, but we can't be greedy. Because if you don't have an artist, you don't have anything. So let's continue. Now, Anita's going to jump into something that if you don't know how she, what she's saying, then it's going to go totally over your head as a new artist, writer, record label, whatever. Because I just went through this situation in the last 72 hours. Check it out. Recordings streamed and sold are inferior and missing original instrumentation. Recording speeds have been sped up. Bootleg bogus vinyls are not from original analog masters, but are from reprocessed, no mid-range frequencies, frequencies, digital copies. Fans deserve better. Now, she came in the game. Miss Anita Baker came in the game when the original gangsters, the mafia, was involved with pirating and organized crime, okay? Now, this has been aired out totally. It's been totally declassified, so I'm not giving you any secret game. You would just have to know where to go find it, and it exists on YouTube. I'm going to do a video on this, okay? But when she came into the game, the mafia and the order organized crime syndicates would bypass or get in front of the distributor from the record label, they would repress the record label uh, records, the physical records, and sell them to the stores at a cheaper price. Now, the stores would like to make more money, so they'll take the cheaper price records, they look exactly the same, all right, and sell them. But what happens is the record label doesn't know that, hey, the stores are moving all these records and making all this money, but we're not doing the numbers that it it should be like it should what's going on with our distributor getting to the store what's happening and they were getting infiltrated all right they were heading them off at the pass and shipping out the reprocessed records to the store and then they would also cut off the record label and then they would make all the, the store would send the money back to the pirates that's how it would work same thing works today I had an issue, and I'm not going to say the record or the artist's name because these are, these are clients. I want to keep it private. Where they ripped the audio off of a YouTube video that we did. Put it up, right? And then they started funneling money through their 
account. I'm not even going to say the distributor's account through their separate distributor's account on a different platform. And it exists today, and, and you can do it today. This is what she's talking about. This is an, this is an original Rapture album from Anita Baker, our beloved uh, 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 Miss Baker right here. On the back, there is a catalog number, R173404. This is in the first group of pressings that went out on this album. And if you have this, you can't get a, the repressings won't have this or the catalog number on the back. It won't even look like this. It won't say Electra in that logo on the back right there. And it won't say Electra on the inside right here. I don't want to get my fingerprints all over this record right here. It won't say it like this because it's different now. So the weight of this vinyl is going to be different. The sound is going to be different. The grooves will be maybe a fraction of a millimeter wider for more bass. Or it, it may change the sound of the original pressing. Okay? Um, it's not going to say, it's not going to have none of the same stuff. Even the number. The press number, the factory number is etched in the record, all right? And it's not going to be there. But you can do the same exact thing digitally, okay? Let me put this back in here so I don't I don't mess it up really quickly. Let's put it back. You're not going to have the lyrics on it or anything. And that's what was happening. The manufacturers were getting bypassed by pirates, okay? That's what she's referring to right here. Now, let's keep going because now we got to come to current day, all right? And she had to correct the fan. She said, correction, 2020 streaming rates uh, are 0 0.003 cents uh, to 0 0.005 cents. Well, don't, don't I not explain the streaming rate all the time on this channel? Do I not do that? I just, I just want to clarify to you all. Do I not do that on this channel? Anyway, uh, and that's a third of a penny or half a penny per stream. For artists. Now, I do have to correct you right here, Miss Baker. That is actually not for the artist. That is actually for the record company. The artist gets a fraction of that fraction of a penny, okay? So if their royalty is 20%, they'll get a fraction of that, all right? So if it's 20% of the half of the penny, you get, you get, you see how bad this is? For you consumers, you might not understand, but for the artist, it is horrible. This is why artists get put on the plantation. You get put on the track. You know what I mean? So you're working for 20% of a fraction of a penny. Come on, man. All right? Minus fees, taxes, et cetera, et cetera. They need to leave me alone. Now, you know what she said with that little fire mark. You know what she was saying. All right? So she goes on to say to another fan who, who was talking about Napster, thanks, Thank you, love. Here's the kicker. Streaming creates big bank for distributors and record companies. The artists get fractionalized one penny per unit pieces of a penny. All right. Now, you can't see that picture in the slide, but it's a penny broken up. Okay. So that's what I just said. The artists get a fraction of the fraction of the fraction. The record companies get paid first and their stockholders in the DSPs or the platforms and the distributors some of them are really a part of the record company. You just don't know that, okay? And so everybody's getting paid last, even if you're an independent record label owner and you're using a distro kid, a tune core, symphonic, whatever it is you're using, you're getting the fraction of the fraction of the fraction, okay? That's what's happening here. I want you all to understand that we're not done with this video. Don't click off this video. We're not done. Because if you're here to learn, you're here to learn. So stay uh, tuned on this video. Let's keep going. Didn't I not just say on February 19th, 2021, T-Pain exposes how much artists owe to their record label. But you know, I got to disguise this stuff and say expose or the untold truth or uh, you know, whatever shocking title it is to get you all to click on a thing to explain how this stuff works. And, and on this video, I really dug into it, but I'm going to dig into it and I'm going to use some of those same slides and I'm going to explain it very short because I know that we're, you know, we're a little ways in on this video, I think maybe 10 minutes in. So let's just jump into it. Now, I got to preface this slide because this is these percentages that you see are reduced from a 20% royalty, a 20% artist royalty, okay? Uh, and they're reduced. They're already pre-reduced. 
they're reduced by the mechanical royalty because let's say if the, the royalty is 20%, you got to take out the mechanical royalty. All right, you got to take out the producer royalty. You got to take out the video royalty for a short amount of time, not the entire time, but for a short amount of time. And, all, and then you have to put all of the debt and pile all of the debt responsibility into that 20%. So roughly... Depending on how you work out the numbers, you're going to be in, in an artist will be in the range of 10 to 15 percent. So I just did some quick numbers. Ten times a dollar is, you know, you got to make ten dollars just to make your dollar back. Or if you're at 12 percent, you got to make eight dollars and thirty three cents to make your dollar back. Or if you're at 15 percent, you got to make six dollars and sixty six cents to make your dollar back. So ten times the money or eight point three 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 times the money or six point six six times the money. OK, but if we go to the next slide, we see. That if we got loaned a million dollars at 10%, we have to make $10 million back, okay, just to, just to recoup the $1 million in debt we owe. If we got loaned $500,000 and at 12%, we have to make $4.166 million, right, or $4,166,665 just to make the $500,000 back. If we got loaned three hundred thousand dollars at a 15% rate, we have to make sixteen times. I mean, six times the money. So we, in order to recoup the three hundred thousand, we'd have to make the record company one million nine hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars. Let's go to the next slide. But if our average streaming rate, this is where Anita was right, is point zero zero three eight, this is just to the indie record label, right, or to the so-called main record label, then that would equate to two point six billion streams just to pay back that one billion and one million dollars that we borrowed earlier, because we got to pay back on ten times the money, so we need two point six billion streams. If it's at 12%, then that's 8.33 times the money. That means that you'd have to make, you have to stream 1.96 billion streams. At six times the money, you have to stream it 500 million times on the stream. How do you have that much promotional money to pay it back? You don't. In walks the 360 deal, hello. The artist will never get off the plantation and eventually, after they've made the record label the money back, which they 98% of artists never recoup, then they'll kick them off the plantation and you can't have your masters back and goodbye. And we got your name and likeness on these albums too, so don't go out trying to sell them you know, on the road in your merch booth. Those belong to us, so you got to pay us because you're not done recouping. You So, you know, oh, I forgot one more slide. Got to pay it back on the net. But that, that goes without saying because I already expressed that in the slides. All expenses are your responsibility, and I'm talking to the artists. So we got to combat this as artists and as indie record labels too. You do. You do. I mean, super indie, like the the the, the bedroom record label. You have one or two artists. You got to combat this thing right here. So this is what we got to do. We got to create a micro fan or a super fan or a fandom or a fan economy. Wait a minute. I'm not done. Didn't I not just say, didn't I not just say December 3rd, 2020, I made a video. I said, what is a super fan micro economy and why artists need one? Didn't I not say that? We talked about it on this channel. Now I know you might not know what it is and it may sound new and it's not appeasing to click on and it's not a super broadcasted title and I don't have the right uh, screenshot. But this is what it is. See, those who click, I think maybe two or 300 people watched it. And out of those two or 300 people who watched it, maybe three or four of those people will actually start doing it. Those are the winners. So by the time everybody gets on the bandwagon five years down the line, they will be way ahead of the curve. Okay? So I said that. But hold on. Didn't I not just say last week, on March 12, 2021, how to build a cash flowing super fan base? I said that, didn't I? I? We did this on this channel. We went through this together. Okay? If you're going to do this thing, all the indie record labels, all of the indie artists who are distributing through these smaller platforms, you're going to have to build your internal economy first. There is no way you will survive the next 10 years without an internal fan economy. You will tank immediately. The tank rate used to be like something like a year. Now we're squeezing that tank rate into about six months because you cannot survive. So 
Here's the way we combat this for all new artists. I can't speak on artists who are who've already signed label deals and situations. This is why I love people like Tech Nine, right? And Strange Music. This is why I love people like Currency and Jet Life. It's why I love all the independent artists and independent labels who've chosen to keep everything strictly independent. If you don't create this, you're going to fail going forward. You gotta take and press your physical copies, go to a vinyl producer, all right? Let's go to a vinyl producer and press up vinyl again for your fan merch and you pay for it. D please don't use disc makers. I, no, man, go find somebody else or go to a pressing facility that can really help you because you got to bypass the exorbitant fees. So do your research. I'll do my research for you as well if I can find a vinyl producer for you, all right? Got to get these things pressed for merch. You press your CDs and make a quality presentation of it and a quality presentation of that vinyl record. You make these t-shirts, you make these hoodies, bandanas, stickers, all this stuff. You create this product. You create a company and you create the products, the physical products to sell. And don't be lazy sitting in your studio. Like, go work your day job. Save up your money. Get some product to press. And then you sell it, whether it be in your e-commerce store or at a show. And don't put your music on Spotify and Apple Music until you have reached your sales number. And then you say, okay, we recoup the money that we expended on creating a product in the album. And once we did that, now Spotify and Apple Music and all this, they can have it. They can have it. All right? But you got to put a stop. And I'm sorry to the consumer, but artists are struggling and they don't have time to wait on what you're, if you're going to decide to be a fan or not. So this is the beauty of social media. You can kind of be a little beholden to social media because they're only giving you 10%. So you got 10% of the eyeballs of your entire following. So you got to you gotta really work at it. Bring in your fans. This is why I stress the super fan economy videos. I'm teaching you how to build this thing. Okay? I'm not giving you all the details. But I'm teaching you how to build this thing. So anyway, that's the end of the video. You can text me 470-291-5767 right there. 470-291-5767. All right. All of those texts. Speaking of super fans, I'm going to, going to give Ryan Leslie a shout out. I use Ryan Leslie's super phone for those who want to contact me. And in the super phone, I'm not going to show you. Super phone. My super fans come to my super phone. All right, you can't see because it's not it's not connecting, but my super phone, and I and and I talk to the people who actually want to talk to me. I'm building a micro fan economy myself, as you can see. So my emails, my addresses, my phone numbers, and everybody that talks to me, and some talk to me on the regular. Those are the ones who get all of the exclusive stuff, and and I give opportunities out on this number. Okay, I don't give it out on YouTube because you got to pay for that. I'm sorry. You pay for it by exchanging the information. That's what it is. And that's what you're going to have to do artists on your platform. Now, this might have been the longest video ever on my channel. It actually is the longest video on my channel besides my old podcasts that are on this channel. But I'm glad you stuck with me to the end. There's so much information in here and there's so much information on my channel. I encourage you to go back to the videos on my channel and watch them. And I will see you all later. Peace. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the show. Make sure you log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to book a call with me to get all your questions answered and problems solved. I'll see you all soon.